Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start our Wednesday class with some prayers first. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmay Shri Guruve Namaha, Om Bhur Bhavaswaha, Tatsavitra Vare Nayam, Bargo Deva Sedi Mahi, Dio Yonaha Prachodayat, Astoma Sadgamya, Tamsoma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityo Burma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehnavavutu, Sehnavunatu, Sehviriam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadi Tamastu, Ma Vidvi Shavahi, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. As human beings, sir, God has given us a lot of powers. Sir. Power to see, power to hear, power to walk, power to think. So many powers. And there's a one unique power which nobody else has on this earth other than human beings. Power to speak. Power to speak. I was reading that uh, Human beings, uh, over the years, over the centuries, they have created uh, over 30,000 languages. Of course, some of them are not being used, but even currently, more than 7,000 languages are being spoken. So such a power we have. That's why our rishis, they have written many, many mantras. Use this power wisely. When we do the havan also, we pray to God. We say, Vachaspati Vacham Naswadatu. God help me to speak sweetly. to speak wisely because greater the power, greater harm can be done also if you don't use that power properly. It is almost like a navigating life just like a dancing. When we are dancing, we should know when to step forward, when to take a step back. The same way with this power to speak. What to say, when to say, how to say. And sometimes, sir, when not to say anything. When to stay completely still. And over here, still means silent. So today I'm going to go through certain situations where it's better to be silent. Then use this power. So by staying silent really means how to use this power. Because silence is the most powerful statement we can make sometimes. That's why our ancient rishis, they talked about the mon breath. We often fast with food but fasting by not speaking also. We should observe that. Or the yogis, they gave us Nabhu Mudra. From time to time, stick your tongue up towards the palate. Leave it there. And don't speak. 
So there are certain situations where the wisest course of action is to simply hold your tongue and let the silence speak volumes. Let's look at some of these situations when we should be silent. Number one, when the emotions are running high. We have all been there. We are social beings at work, at home, with friends. Sometimes tension is rising. Voices escalate. Air is practically humming with emotion. It's in these instances that these rishis say to zip it up. Why, you would ask? At that time, the emotional arousal impairs our ability to process information. And we cannot make balanced decisions because of those emotions. When we are heated up, our brain goes into the fight or flight mode. We are more likely to say things we don't mean or to make decisions that we later regret. Because it's a primal instinct that doesn't serve us well in most modern day scenarios. So I can vouch for the power of silence in these moments. So by choosing to remain silent, we provide ourselves the space to observe our emotions without getting the swept away by them. You got to learn how to be present with what's happening without responding impulsively. Action we can take, but not impulsive action. Response we should give, but not impulsively. So next time you find yourself in a heated situation, take a deep breath and choose silence over words. It's not about suppressing your feelings, but about creating a pause to respond mindfully as well as thoughtfully. Another time you should choose a silence is when you are not informed enough. And this one is pretty straightforward actually, but it's one we often overlook. That's why in Hindi, that idiom, Thotha Chana Baje Ghana, that means we know little, but we want to talk. And we are just showing our own ignorance at that time. If you are not well informed about a subject, it's best to stay silent. Because we live in an age of instant opinions and fast facts. And it's very easy to feel pressure to have a say in everything. But let's be honest. That's not always the best approach. Because sometimes we just jump into the discussions with half-baked knowledge. And that's not very wise. So speaking without understanding only muddies the waters and confuses 
the person who is speaking and also the person who is hearing. Remember, it's okay not to know everything. Sometimes the wisest thing you can do is listen and learn. Third one on the list is when your words may harm others. This one might be a bit difficult to swallow, but it's vital. Right speech is one of the fundamental aspects of a yogi's life. So that means abstaining from lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, or even idle chatter. Speech should be sacred, not tamasic or rajasic. Because words have the power. Power to create and destroy, to heal and also harm. That's how powerful the speech is. If you find yourself in a situation where your words may cause pain or harm to another person, and it could be intentionally or unintentionally, it's wise to hold your tongue. Because saying sorry later on or saying, oh, I didn't intend it, that doesn't help much. Remember, we all carry an invisible load of struggles and challenges. A word spoken in anger or frustration can leave a wound that lasts far longer than any physical scar. Physical scars can be healed, and they do heal. But words are spoken, they stay with the person who has gotten hurt. While it may be satisfying in the moment, the aftermath is often filled with regret. Sometimes the kindest thing you can do for both yourself and others is to choose a silence over harmful words. Another time you should stay silent is when you need to listen. Because we are often so focused on being heard that we forget to listen. Active listening is a skill. And that requires mindfulness. That requires patience. And also practice. That is the message given by Lord Krishna in the very first chapter. Vishad Yoga. Arjun is speaking, kept on speaking, kept on speaking. How many words Lord Krishna spoke? Not even a full sentence. Active listening. Yoga encourages us to be fully present in each moment. And we can be fully present if we listen. When we are listening, we are learning something new. When we are speaking, all we are doing is uh, taking out we are, what we already know. When we are engaged in conversation, being present means really listening to what the other person is saying. 
often we find ourselves imagining what we'll say next. So we are not really listening. So we got to practice this. Not just our turn to speak, waiting for that. In many situations, the best thing you can do is remain silent and simply listen. Remember that. It could be a friend sharing his or her troubles. But it could be a colleague explaining a new concept. Or a loved one expressing their feelings. Your silent attention can speak volumes. It's not always about having the right words or the perfect response. It's about offering a safe space for others to express themselves without interruption or judgment. We often like to, as yoga students, practice mindfulness. Mindfulness means we want to be fully present in the moment. And that really means choosing to remain silent. And this allows you to fully engage with your environment, your thoughts, without the distraction of unnecessary conversation. Practice this while exercising, while going for a walk, while doing some mundane activities, washing the dishes, cooking. Silence. Silence can be a powerful tool for personal growth. Silence gives us the space to observe our thoughts without judgment or interruption. And this can really lead to a profound insight about ourselves and our lives. It allows us to understand our emotions better and even manage our stress more effectively and cultivate a deep sense of inner peace, which we all Looking for inner peace. So if you are a yoga student, uh, I would encourage you to experiment uh, with intentional periods of silence. Intentional. Like in half an hour, an hour. Complete silence. No spoken words. You might be surprised at what you discover within that quiet. Because before we really experience that inner silence, we have to learn how to keep this mouth silent. Another time you should be silent when silence itself is the answer. This may seem a bit paradoxical, but remember in certain situations, the silence itself is the most powerful response you can give. No words can equal it. It is called the power of stillness and silence. So it's not just about refraining from speech, but about embracing the quiet as a form of a profound wisdom. Sometimes gurus use that also. Students are asking the question and gurus uses that silence as the answer. Think about it. 
Have you ever asked a question to which there was no easy answer? Or found yourself in a situation where words felt inadequate? In these instances, choosing silence over force words can communicate more than any speech. Because it acknowledges the complexity of the situation and respects the profundity of the moment. The silence. So remember, silence isn't an absence of response. It is the response. Silence. Another time you should stay silent is when your words won't change the situation. If you propose to speak, always ask yourself, is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? We are all familiar with this. But I would like to add another question to that list. Will it make a difference? There are situations in life where words, no matter how eloquently spoken, are well-intentioned, simply won't change the outcome. It could be a stubborn friend refusing to see reason, a bitter argument, which is spiraling out of control, or a situation where the decision is already final. Why do you want to waste your energy? In these instances, speaking up might only serve to fuel the fire or cause unnecessary distress. It's a harsh truth, but an important one to recognize. So acceptance in these cases, it doesn't mean passivity or resignation, but recognizing the reality as it is, so good to accept the reality. It's about understanding that not everything is within our control. And we are okay with it. Another one on the list is uh, when you should stay silent is uh, when you need to speak up. You will say, why? Stay silent when you need to speak up. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but let me explain. We always learn the importance of intentional action. And over here in this case, intentional speech so this means that before we speak, we take a moment to pause and reflect on our words and their potential impact. And if you're in a situation where you feel the urge to react immediately, because maybe you're upset or you feel attacked, it's often wiser to stay silent for a moment. What will happen is uh, you'll have a pause uh, which will give you the chance to collect your thoughts. You'll be calming your emotions uh, and you will decide on the most mindful response. So this doesn't mean you should stay silent indefinitely. Rather, it's about giving yourself the space to respond instead of react. 
So in essence, uh, choosing silence initially can lead to more meaningful and effective communication in the end. So it's not about avoiding difficult conversations, but approaching them with clarity and mindfulness. It is like a subtle shift in perspective, but it can significantly improve your interactions and relationships. So silence is power. We think that silence is a sign of weakness. Other person will think that we are weak. No. It's not a sign of weakness or avoidance. Especially when it's uh, used at these certain occasions. So in many situations, it can be a powerful tool for self-reflection or even effective communication. So by understanding when to choose silence over words, we can definitely navigate our relationships and interactions more skillfully. We can really foster deeper connections. And most importantly, we can cultivate inner peace. Always remember that every moment holds the potential for growth. Potential for learning. It's all about how we choose to engage with it. Sometimes we think we are learning and growing only during meditation. Or only during these classes. Or through seminars. No. We are growing, we are learning 24-7. Choice is ours in every situation. Do we want to grow? Do we want to learn or not? So sometimes by speaking, we grow. Sometimes by listening, we grow. Sometimes by being quiet, we grow. Ultimately, we got to learn how to grow and how to stay peaceful also. That's what we have to watch further. As we reach into the higher and higher layers of spirituality, this is must. Recognize the power of speech and recognizing how to use it. So let's stop it here and we'll have some interaction. I'm sure you have some questions, comments. So we'll go through that also. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.